I was meditating yesterday, and there was a word that kept popping up over and over again. And it wasn't until I saw the meaning of it that I was given a clarity moment. And it's a word that we all keep using, and myself included. But I want to define it, and I want to bring clarity, or give you the clarity that was given to me. I had a friend say, I don't, after listening to your video on the Neville's Ladder experiment, I started realizing that I don't know if I'm thinking from the position of it already being so, or I'm trying to make it happen. Which is similar to what Neville said when he said, don't think about it, but think from it. And what I kept hearing in meditation was, don't question it, but change it. Don't desire it, but fulfill it. And this is the clarity that was given to me, is that the word it means self. And when you see, when you see that, it will make sense. That you don't think about it, you don't think about yourself being it, you think from yourself being it, and that it is you. That's what you, your it is what you desire, but it's yourself. That you go into meditation, you go inward, you don't desire it, but fulfill it. Well, what's it? It's me. It's myself. And so I fulfill myself. That's the goal. He has a, Neville has a video where he says, you can change the dream, change it by daring to assume that you are not what reason tells you you're not. And he says, it might be difficult to imagine you'll ever be it, but forget all that. Imagine it anyways. And we keep using this word it. And in that sentence, he made it and dream the same. But that can get rather confusing because how do you know you changed the dream? How do you know you changed it enough? How do you know that you were successful in changing it? You can only really know from yourself. And so when he, what really should have been said, in my opinion, is you can change self by daring to assume self is different. Because self and dream are the same thing. And self and it are the same thing. If you can dare to assume that your self is different, you will know if you're successful in that. It's not going to be an outside thing. You can remain exactly as you are sitting in the, in the chair you're in and change yourself. Whether you sustain that is up to you but you can do it. And you will see that the world, when you do change it, change yourself, you will see that you were never your behaviors to begin with. And you weren't the state that you were were previously in. You could have been in that state for 30 years. That was never you. And what you will see is that the world has defined you by your definitions. The world defined you by your states and has told you these are your permanent prisons. But it's not. And so what we do is we take the definition of man, which is a being that we call a a being that simply lives upon its senses and is really bound by its senses. What we do is we expand the definition of what we call man. And we see that it's a being that can imagine. It's a being that can believe. It's a being that can change. And then you will, instead of identifying yourself as as a being that is just a physical body, or bound by your senses, you will see yourself as a being that can move in and out of states through the ability to change from inward to outward. And so you will see that the change that you're seeking, the change in yourself that you're seeking, is within you as well. But Neville is right. You might think it's impossible to ever be it, but the point is not to figure out the possibility of it. Instead, imagine that you are it, that you've changed yourself into it, that you have this power in you, that the power of change is in you, and you apply it inwardly. And then you will see that stagnation is in you. The ability to move is in you. The ability to stay is in you. And all these things that you're really wanting were in you. When you go outside to seek it, you're blind. But when you go inward, you will actually see. Become entranced by your desire in you. Become entranced by seeing it fulfilled. Become entranced with the change of yourself. 
And that's what true enchantment is. And so you see the key that you're seeking is also within you, and the key is self. And so again, the goal is to not figure out the possibility of the change of self, but to just actually do it. Neville would say that it's not his responsibility to make it happen in the world. His responsibility is to imagine it's already happened and sustain that with faith. And so if you can see that it's always going to come back to self, then you can feel sustained. You can feel stable, knowing that it's the change in self that causes a change in my reality. And so you see reality and self become the same. And so we start to broaden our idea of self. We don't limit it to just behaviors and states, but we see that the being that is in the state is different than the state itself. That the state really is dormant. It's the lights are off. It's a room with the lights off, but when you enter, the lights turn on. The room doesn't disappear. The state doesn't go away, but it simply becomes dormant. And you enter a different room, a different state. And you live in there inside yourself. You don't have to feel that you're doing anything wrong by doing that. Actually, the Bible tells us that that's actually how, you know, righteousness is how you overcome sin. But righteousness is actually believing in yourself. It is fulfilling your desire. That's what right, the righteous act is to imagine that it is already so. And that's exactly what the character Christ did in the story. He imagined that the harvest was already ripe. That's the right, that's the right course of action is to first start with the inner. Change that. As it says, to change the inside of a cup, not the outside. And then the outer will be clean as well. And so when Neville says you remain faithful to it, you remain loyal to it, again, what is the it? It's yourself. So that's what you remain loyal to. You remain loyal to the change of yourself. You remain faithful to yourself. So if you forget everything I say, or everything I've written down, if you forget it all, remember that self is the key. If you can remember that, if you can go back to that and remember it, then you won't need to think you're missing something. You won't feel like you, you're, you're missing that piece of knowledge that once you get it, it's all going to make sense. Always remember that self is the key. If you can sustain that in memory, then you, will, you won't seek outside of you because self is within for a change in your life. You will see that the self is the most important thing to you. And so you learn to change the most important thing in your life, which is yourself. And I want to emphasize when Neville says to dare to assume it, even though reason tells you you're not it now, and it'll be difficult for you to ever be it, do it anyways. Just dare to do it. And as I said in the latter experiment, imagine that you actually are it. You actually have changed. That you actually are experiencing it now. Not as something to get external, but something to actually be inside. And then that, what you are inside is what's going to, you can say, express or give birth to, or it's going to find its way to externalize itself. That is just what we do naturally. We are always naturally externalizing ourselves in this shadow. But you want to change your orientation inside yourself, and then you will express that new change. But self is going to be the key. You're not really needing a new technique. You're needing a change in yourself. And Neville often quoted this, but I'm going to say it in a different way from his own words. He said that an assumption, though denied by your senses, Though the world would say it's false, if you persist in it, it will harden into fact. And take that clarity that that it is yourself. So if you persist in yourself, although it's false, if you keep persisting in yourself, you will harden into fact. So when you go inside yourself to imagine yourself in a new state, don't feel like you don't belong there. Don't feel like you weren't invited. Feel welcomed. Feel accepted. Accept yourself in this new state. And you'll see that acceptance will go a long way within you. And then you will gradually change yourself. It might take 
some time to remove certain ideas that have been embedded in you about yourself, but they can be removed and they can be changed. And once you do that, you will see yourself has always been the key. And I just want to add that I've had a lot of people ask me if I offer any kind of one-on-one talk with me. And I just want to say that I will be offering this. But since my time is limited, I will be charging a fee. And if you're interested, you can go to the description. You can just email me for more details. Thanks for listening.